I want to talk about the future because I, I think a lot of people perceive Sotheby's as basically being the same business as it was in 1744. You're selling pictures to bidders who raise a paddle. Yeah. Online bidding and sales of your, let's say, 6.4 billion in sales last year, what percent is online and where is that headed in the next two to three years? So it turns out 37% of the things that we sold last year were sold to online bidders. We did a half a billion dollars worth of online underbids and it's growing at 24% a year. So uh, the, the future looks very bright for us in the online space. And what is the value of things that you're selling to online bidders? I mean, are they buying five, $10 million pictures or is it the smaller stuff? And is that a good thing? Yeah, well, we have had uh, multi-million dollar lots sell online and million plus dollar lots sell online. But interestingly, one of the things a lot of people don't know is actually a, a small percentage of our total lots are more than a million. Only one and a half percent of what we sold is more than a million dollars. What's the average price of everything you sold last year? In the $75,000 range. Okay. Now, there's a lot of talk about AI and blockchain in the art space. How are you using AI and will you get into blockchain where they're talking about using it for a database yeah. for art and looking at the sources and provenance of art? Well, AI has several different applications. First, it helps us match people who like certain things to other things that they might like. Second, it helps us triage things by the value or what we think might happen. And that can be really helpful if we are getting lots of things being consigned and we want to focus on just those that we think are most likely to have value. And I want to mention that because you have a thing where people can send you a picture of, let's say, something that they found in Grandpa's attic that might be worth something, might not be. Yes. And you use AI to figure out whether that's truly worth it. And how many of those things that people just sent to you over the transom, the digital transom, have you actually sold? So last year, we had 70,000 things sent over the transom, as you said. We sold 1,200 of them for $56 million. And by the way, that's extremely high margin business for us and growing like gangbusters. Um, just in the first two months of this year, we've already consigned an additional $15 million more. So we're on track to double that this calendar year. And, and what about the broader art market? We've seen a little bit of a volatile stock market situation. Sure. There's some who think there is some correlation. End of last year, markets have come back. But when you look to May, which is your big event coming up, yeah. what do you see in terms of consignments, sales? Is there Are the bidders out there? May consignments look very strong for us here in New York, and we're very excited about that. And interestingly, if you look at last week in London, although the sales themselves were slightly smaller, we had heavy bidding, particularly in the modern impressionist sale from Asia. That's a good sign. Even over the weekend, we had a very strong wine auction in DRC, which is Burgundy, another leading indicator. Ted, in talking about uh, how much of the business is now online, uh, one of the functions, I guess, of, uh, of the Internet is to kind of reduce the role of the middleman. So yes. what is your place in all that in terms of making these matches from buyer to seller? Well, one of the things that we do is we provide authenticity, we provide assurance on, uh, assurance on title, and we make sure that the buyer's money is good and the seller's money is good. Those are things that uh, really have a lot of value and we anticipate it having more so going forward. So we like our role. So, And uh, I guess the other question is, um, does anybody else, uh, can, can anybody do that on their own? Because, I mean, barriers to entry is the other thing I always think about. Uh, yes, you have the relationships. What's the value ongoing of those yeah. relationships? It's a very interesting question. One of the things to note is that we are selling our, cel uh, celebrating our 275th anniversary today. It's not a new thing that someone could have come in during that period of time. Um, interestingly, uh, Jeff Bezos actually had a collaboration with us 15, 16 years ago. eBay has had a collaboration with us. And we continue to be strong. And in fact, if anything, stronger today than we were a year or even two ago in terms of the electronic side. Are, are you nervous at all about a, a shift in sentiment, uh, especially at the high end in the U.S. regarding taxes? Um, uh, well, it's interesting. We, we spent a lot of time on that uh, a year or two ago with the Tax Reform Act. And uh, frankly, we haven't seen a huge change in the, um, uh, uh, no, so no, not really. These calls to tax the wealthy for the, coming from the Democrats. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you don't feel clients are worried about that. Again, when you've been around 275 years, we've experienced 90% <laughs> tax rates. We've experienced wars. We've experienced revolutions. And we're still here to not only talk about it, but grow and thrive. Well, I don't mean it as an, as an existential threat. Absolutely. <laughs> but I'm just saying on the margin, uh, a bid that might have happened otherwise doesn't happen because someone's a little tighter. Yeah, it's possible. But then again, we're global. And so where we we might see a particular region such as the United States get a little soft. And by the way, I'm not even sure it will. It seems to be robust right now. Um, overseas, we think, could well step in and compensate. And, and finally, 
your competitor, Christie's, is private, and there yes. are many people who think they have an advantage there because they can buy things in that didn't do well. They can do all sorts of things with guarantees that aren't disclosed that, that maybe put you at a disadvantage. Should Sotheby's, which was started in 1744, came public in New York in 1988, should it be private, do you think? Well, listen, I think, uh, well, first of all, we're a publicly traded company, and we do what's right for the shareholders and our clients and, of course, our, our colleagues. Um, no, I, I don't have any point of view on that other than to say we're going to do the right thing by the shareholders. So.